we start okay so last time we have discussed the various test for the convergence of the series now in continuation we will do few more test uh, uh, discuss few more tests like a comparison test and limit comparison test and after that we will come to the conditional and absolute convergence of the series so first test which is Uh, in continuation, we have another test is which is known as the comparison test. Comparison test. The test says, let x, which is say x n, and y, say y n, be real sequences. sequences and suppose and suppose uh, for, uh, for suppose that for some k for some k which is uh, of course a positive integer we have this inequality 0 is less than or equal to x n less than or equal to y n and this is valid for n greater than or equal to k. It may be true for all n's also. If not possible, then at least after certain stage, if this inequality holds, or then the series, uh, the convergence of the series, then the convergence of the series sigma by n n is of course 1 to infinity convergence of the series implies uh, the convergence of of the series sigma x n 1 to infinity 1 to infinity 1 to infinity and uh, the divergence of the series of the series sigma x n n is 1 to infinity implies the divergence of the series sigma y n. In fact, this type of result we have discussed already in case of the sequences. So, similar results we have for a sequence of non-negative series we a sequence of the non negative terms all terms are non negative so what the comparison test says if we are having a series say sigma n of each terms is non negative then the to discuss the convergence of the series or to find out the nature of the series sigma xn if we are able to identify some sequence by n for which this relation 0 is less than or equal to x n less than or equal to y n holds for either for all n or maybe after certain stage. Then the convergence of this by n will implies the convergence of the series sigma x n. It means that with the help of x n if we find out a suitable y n for which the convergence of the series sigma y n nature is known then one can easily establish the convergence of y n. And in case if this relation is true, but if the series is diverging sigma x n, then the divergence of by n will be there. It means if we are interested to know the, uh, and the we uh, expect or something that the series is diverging, then we have to find this relation where this is diverging, then this will diverge. So, this is the main uh, motto for this comparison test. The proof of course, is very um, straightforward. Uh, suppose we have this series converges given suppose the relation hold 1 holds and the series sigma y n 1 to infinity converges. This is given. Okay. 
<coughs> so, by definition of the convergence, a series is said to be convergent if and only if it is Cauchy. So, for a given epsilon L greater than 0, so for given epsilon L greater than 0, there exists a positive integer say capital M which will depend on epsilon L such that for all m n for all m which is greater than say n and greater than equal to m epsilon. Of course, all m n greater than equal to m epsilon I, cho I am choosing m to be larger than n uh, for all m n greater than equal to m the condition the condition that y n plus 1 y n plus 2 up to say y m is less than epsilon L. Because basically this condition is what? This is nothing but uh, the S m minus S n, where S m is the sigma by a by i, i is 1 to m. So, basically this is a Cauchy convergence criteria. So, a series because it is given to be convergent. So, by means of the Cauchy convergence criteria for any epsilon one can identify a positive integer. So, that this result holds. Okay. Now, let us choose m to be greater than the maximum value of this k for which this result is true, this inequality is valid as well as the capital M which we have already got it because of this convergence. So, if I choose m to be greater than this, then in that case the result this thing because y x n is less than equal to y n. So, this part will give that x n plus 1 by n x n plus 2 etcetera. This will imply that x n plus 1 x n plus 2 and so on up to say x m. This will remain less than by n plus 1 by n plus 2 y m because x n is less because m is greater than a the number so it satisfies both the conditions okay and then this will be less than epsilon L. this is true for all m greater than uh, the maximum of candy and this is greater than zero because all terms are positive so it will be greater than or at the most equal to zero so what this shows this shows that this sequence s uh, dash m minus s dash n this remains less than epsilon L for all m n n greater than equal to capital N capital and say k uh, maximum of k n epsilon L. this some some integer ok k n epsilon L. and we are s dash m is what s dash m stands for sigma x i i is 1 to m. So, this shows the sequence x s dash n is a Cauchy sequence therefore, it is convergent. So, this implies the series sigma x n 1 to infinity is convergent. Okay. So, the proof is very simple. The statement b follows from the first it follows from uh, what the we says the series diverges then sigma b n diverges. Suppose the series given sigma x n to be a divergent series and let this series sigma by n converges, but the relation one also holds. So, it means if a series by n is convergent then according to the part a x n must be convergent sigma x n must be convergent, but it is contradicts the result uh, given thing because the given is sigma x n is divergent. Therefore, a contradiction is because of our resumption this series converges. So, wrong. So, B follows from A immediately. Okay. Nothing to prove here is. Okay. Now, another test is uh, or let us uh, uh, first take the test then another test is which we call it as a limit comparison test. In fact, this is the modified version of this here because we it is very difficult to get this identity 
which is valid for all n all after a certain stage. It is very very difficult for a sequence x n and by n 2 arbitrary sequence are there. So, it is not possible always to get such an inequality. Therefore, this test comparison may not be very much helpful unless you know this inequality. So, what is a we have slightly it is modified and a simpler form is given which is known as the limit comparison test. The test says suppose that suppose x which is x n and y which is y n are strictly positive sequences of real numbers. of real numbers and suppose and suppose the limit of this x n divided by y n over n when n tends to infinity exist. Suppose this limit exists say is equal to r say is equal to r this limit h then what he says is if r is different from 0 means when the limit of x n over y n is different from 0 then the series then the series sigma x n 1 to infinity convert is convergent if and only if if and only if sigma y n is convergent is convergent it means the behavior of the series sigma by n and sigma x n are parallel that if this limit x n over y n exists and it different from 0 then both the series will have the same nature. If this series is convergent this has to be convergent okay. and second part is if r is equal to 0. Of course, the divergence part here is not mentioned divergence we cannot say if it is one is diverging other will also be diverging. But obviously, if uh, we have this sort earlier relation that that also gives a result for a divergence of the series. But here we can only take the claim about the convergent part of it that is so far the convergence is concerned both these series will have the same nature same means convergent then and if r is 0 and if and if sigma y n is convergent y n is convergent then sigma x n 1 to infinity is convergent. So, there is certain limitation in this limitation is that we are unable to test the divergence part we cannot claim anything about the driver, but obviously for the convergent which we are interested more to judge the convergent with the help of the given series. Okay. So, let us see the proof of this. Now, what is proof is given that given the limit x n over y n as n tends to infinity is say r which is different from 0 of course or r. Now, once the limit is given then for any epsilon or greater than 0 by definition what happened by definition this mode of x n over by n minus r this will go to 0 as n is sufficiently large or for a epsilon or greater than 0 that is for a given epsilon that is for given epsilon say equal to r I am taking r y 2 greater than 0 there exist there exist there exist a integer a positive integer say k such that x n over y n this will lie between what 2 bond r minus epsilon r plus epsilon 
So, here the r minus epsilon means r by 2 and then here is also r plus epsilon r by 2 and which is obviously less than 2 r. This will be less than or equal to 2 r. This hardly matters. Even this 3 by 2 will work. Okay? So, we get the 3 by 2 or this is equal to 3 by 2 r limit. Okay? 3 by 2 r into y. Now, if we like this n, this is true for all n greater than equal to k. Is it not? This is true for all n greater than equal to k. So, this happens. Now, from here, can we say that r by 2 into y n is less than equal to x n, which is less than equal to 3 by 2 r into y n. Okay? Now, apply the comparison test and this is true for n greater than equal to k because the by n's are positive. Therefore, when we are multiplying this, it is not going to change the inequality as by n's are greater than or equal to 0. Of course, greater than 0 otherwise this will equal to 0 will help problem. So, by n is greater than 0. Now, apply the comparison test. So, by comparison test, we can get comparison test uh, this is comparison o and here also it is o not i o comparison test. Okay? So, by comparison test we can say the result a follows uh, the part a follows. Okay? that is what. Now, a case second is part b if r is 0, r is 0 means that is limit of this x n over y n as n tends to infinity is 0. Now, since x n and y n both are positive non negative. So, ratio cannot be negative. So, clearly from here it implies that x n over y n will always be greater than or equal to 0. In fact, it is strictly greater than 0 because they are non-negative term, strictly, strictly positive sequences of real numbers, strictly positive sequence of none is 0 even. So, x n over y n will be strictly greater than 0. Now, since the limiting value is 0, it means the terms keep on decreasing and decreases to 0. So, after a certain stage, this ratio will remain less than 1. So, once it is less than 1, so you can say this is less than equal to 1 for n greater than equal to k. This is true because limit is 0 means it keeps on in decreasing and decreases to 0. So, after a certain stage the ratio will remain less than or equal to 1 and it is always greater than 0. So, now what happens if we apply this if suppose sigma by n is convergent. So, from here you multiply by by n. So, this implies that x n x 0 is less than x n less than equal to y n. So, if sigma by n convergent sigma x n will come in. So, part b follows clear. So, this is the two results which will help in getting the nature of this series uh, whether it is convergent or not. Only what we have to do we have to suitably identify by n. Okay, and then inequality or maybe the limit problem. Limit. So I advise that limit is a much better way of judging the convergence of the series. So how to identify y n so that limit of x n over y n will exist, and then nature of the y n will decide the nature of the x n. Okay, let's see the few examples which will help in getting this thing clear. Suppose I wanted to test the convergence of this series of this series sigma n is 1 to infinity 1 over n square plus n. Now, when we say the convergence of the series does not mean that we are only in 
we have to test only the convergence part. Convergence of the series means we have to see whether this series is a convergent series or divergent. But the way of writing is test the convergence means it includes both whether the series is convergent or diverging. Okay. So, let us see this is the sequence of non negative real numbers strictly of course, positive because n is 1 to infinity. Therefore, we can apply the ratio uh, comparison limit test, but what comparison limit test says there must be the sequence x n and y n this sequence if we want to test this series sigma n you have to identify y n in such a way. So, that the limit of this exists and in order to identify this. So, here x n is giving to be 1 over n square plus n. Now, normally when we say the y n to be identified we normally use this result sigma we know sigma 1 by n to the power p when n is 1 to infinity this is convergent converges if p is strictly greater than 1 and diverges if p is strictly less than or equal to 1. So, basically the y n should be chosen in such a way so that it will fall in one of the in this category. So, here what is the trick is let us take the here term n anything common here outside any n square if we take outside common from the denominator take the largest power of n say outside then what happens if we choose by n to be 1 by n square. Then when you are choosing n square outside that this becomes 1 over 1 plus 1 by n. So, limit of this x n over y n will exist. So, clearly limit of x n over y n when n tends to infinity is nothing but what this is equal to n square over n square plus n limit as n tends to infinity divide by n square. So, 1 plus 1 by n and limit as n tends to infinity and this limit is 1 which is different from 0. So, what we see here that if x n and y n both are the strictly positive real sequence of real numbers such that limit of x n over y n exists which is different from 0. Therefore, this series is convergent if and only if this series is convergent, but this series is of the form sigma 1 upon n to the power p where p is greater than 1. So, the series converges. So, this implies that sigma 1 over n square plus n is convergent if and only if sigma 1 by n square is convergent which is true which is true because of this therefore, answer is the series will be convergent. So, answer is the series 1 to infinity 1 over n square plus n is convergent is convergent. Okay. Now, similarly if you go for the another example say let us take this example sigma test the series sigma 1 over under root n plus 1 1 to infinity. Again this is a sequence of non negative real number strictly positive real numbers. So, to test this we will apply the limit uh, comparison test. So, let us take here choose x n here is 1 over root n plus 1 then y n you take it the term which is highest power here is highest power here. So, highest power is 1 there is no problem n you the higher when you take outside it is becomes 1 by root n. So, if I take this and the limit of x n over y n when we choose the limit the limit will come out to be 1 which is different from 0 you just see take root n and divide by it means the nature of these two series are identical, but the series but the series sigma 1 by root n 1 to infinity this is of the form sigma n to the power 1 upon n to the power p where p is less than 1. So, diverges therefore, the series sigma 1 by under root n plus 1 will also diverge and that is the answer. Okay. So, we can get it this way. So, main, main idea is that uh, you have to pick up the suitably 
the uh, terms by n, so that we can compare it with our given sequence, uh, given series x n, the terms of the series x n, and hence the uh, one can identify the nature. Now, this is the one which we um, uh, have a very important, uh, these uh, tests are very interesting important, because it gives immediately the series nature of the series without going for the sum, because sometimes we are not interested in getting exactly the sum of the series or the limit of the sequence of partial sum, because it will not help us. We are not interested in finding the sum of the series. We were all interested only finding the series whether it is convergent or divergent and for this, these tests are very much helpful. Now, there are some few more tests which we will discuss after the concept of the absolute convergence and conditional convergent. So, let us take <coughs> this absolute convergence and conditional convergence. Now, we have seen the two type of the series, we have discussed the nature of these two series. Series one is sigma 1 by n, n is 1 to infinity and second one is sigma 1 to infinity minus 1 to the power n. Now, what is the difference between these two? If we look the first series, all the terms are positive and in fact, is strictly greater than 0. They are non-negative, strictly positive, strictly positive real number and this is a harmonic series, which we have already shown is a diverging one, diverges. While in the second case, the terms are alternately positive negative. So, if we take a start with this uh, 1 to infinity or maybe 0, I will take 0 no, no 1 to infinity let us take here we can say it is ok minus 1 plus half minus 1 by 3 and so on like this. So, the terms are alternately positive negatives and this is a alternating series and we have also seen that this series is a convergent one. Because if you remember we have this find out the even number of terms and the odd sum of the odd number of terms and then the difference of these two is bounded by 1 upon 2 to the power 2 n plus 1 which goes to 0. So, limit of even number terms and odd number terms are coming to be the same and the limit exists and in fact, the sum we can identify the sum for this series. So, it is a convert. Now, these two series gives an idea of the two different type of convergence. One is whether when the original series is convergent, what when you replace this series terms of this series by its absolute value, because the basically 1 by n is the absolute value of this, because this first part is nothing but what? This first part 1 series, first series that is the sigma is nothing but the absolute term of this thing equal to this. So, the original series is convergent, but when you take its absolute uh, sum of its absolute term it diverges. So, this shows that the series the convergence can be uh, break up into two type one is the odd convergence which is we call it as a conditional convergence another one is the absolute convergence. So, we define the uh, absolute convergence of the series as follows let x which is x n v a sequence in R in the real numbers set of real numbers we say the series is coming ok. Then this series then the series sigma x n say 1 to infinity is said to be absolutely convergent 
absolutely convergent if the series of its absolute terms that is sigma of mod x n n is 1 to infinity is convergent is convergent in R. So, one more thing when we say the series is convergent in R it means the sum of this series must be a real number or the limit of the sequence of S n must exist and should be a real number the point must be in real number. There are these uh, if suppose I take the set say minus 1 uh, say 0 to 1 open interval and if I say the sequence 1 by n then this sequence is not convergent in 0 1 why because the limiting value is coming to be 0 which is away from the set. So, for the convergence when we say the limit of the sequence of partial sum must exist and it should be the point in the set where the domain where we are considering. So, when we say it is convergent in all means the sum must be a real number. Okay. So, a series sigma x n is said to be absolute convergent if the series of its corresponding series of its absolute term is convergent in R. Okay. And a series is said to be a series a series is said to be conditionally convergent a series sigma x n 1 to infinity is said to be conditionally conditionally convergent if it is convergent if it is convergent but but it is not absolutely convergent So, that is what I So, such type of um, basically uh, case occurs when the series is having at some positive some negative terms, because in that case only we can talk about the conditional convergent and the absolute convergent. If all the terms of the series are non negative and if the series is convergent then obviously, absolute convergent and conditional convergent is the same, because there is no difference at all. So, we say. <coughs> the lizards which is valid for the uh, non negative series of the non negative terms. So, as a trivial or as a remark you can say a series of positive terms a series of positive terms is absolutely convergent. is absolutely absolutely convergent if and only if it is convergent it is convergent because when the non negative terms are there there is no question of the conditional case occurs ok. Now, in this sequence we have few results which will help in uh, further study. First result is if a series in R in set of real numbers we will denote by R or real numbers if a series in R is absolutely absolute convergent then convergent then then it is convergent I think proof is simple when the series in R is absolutely convergent. So, what is the meaning of this is the series 
of its non negative terms is convergent that is when we replace the terms by its uh, corresponding absolute terms then the corresponding series is convergent. So, given that given sigma of mod x n 1 to infinity convergent given this series is convergent. Okay. So, by definition by Cauchy criteria. So, by Cauchy convergence criteria we can say that for a given f signal greater than 0 there exist a positive integer capital M say which depends on f signal such that such that if we take m and n both are greater than or equal to capital n capital m sorry because we are choosing capital m which depends on f signal capital m then s m minus s n should be less than f signal then mod of x n plus 1 plus mod x n plus 2 up to mod x m is less than f signal ok. But basically what this is nothing but and this will be but what is the mod of s m minus s n this mod of s m minus s n is mod of x n plus 1 up to x m which is less than equal to mod of x n plus 1 and so on up to x m by triangular inequality and but this is less than f sin so this is less than f sin so this implies shows the sequence s n satisfy the Cauchy convergence criteria is Cauchy. Hence, it is convergent Cauchy is satisfying or set uh, Cauchy uh, sequence s n satisfies Cauchy convergence criteria. Therefore, the limit of s n will exist therefore, the series sigma x n 1 to infinity converges. Okay, that is what is so because f sign is an arbitrary thing. So, we can say this is convergent. Okay. Okay. Now, when we have the series sigma x n then at terms of the series is fixed up now that is first term, second term, third term and onward. Now, without uh, changing the position of the terms. If I regroup the terms, then the new series so obtained, the question is whether this series will retain the same character as the earlier one. If the earlier one is convergent, whether by regrouping the terms of the series without changing their order, the new series whether it remain convergent or not. The answer is yes if a series is convergent and if we do not change the order of these uh, uh, terms that is the first term remain in the, on the first position third term remains at the third position, but we regroup it may be first three terms we are combining then another five terms we are combining like this way then the new series so obtained will be convergent if the original series is convergent and not only this it will have the same sum. So, that this is called the grouping of the series. So, what is the grouping of series? Grouping of the series we mean suppose a series is given okay, uh, from a given series sigma x k k is 1 to infinity if we construct if we construct a new series sigma by k, k is 1 to infinity by leaving the order of the terms x n fixed by leaving the order of the terms x n fixed that is the order of the terms all the position 
all position of the terms is not changed. So, if a new series is obtained by leaving the order of the term, order of the term x and fixed, but but by inserting the brackets by combining by combine by inserting insert by inserting inserting brackets that groups that group together together finite number of terms finite number of terms then such a series we call it a grouping suppose I say a series x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 plus x 4 plus x n and so on this is our original series 1 to infinity and now what we do is we construct a series like this x 1 say plus x 2 plus x 3 say x 4 x 5 x 6 x 7 like this way. So, this new series which obtained say equivalent to the by 1 plus by 2 which is equivalent to by 1 plus by 2 by 3 and so on. So, this series sigma by k k is 1 to infinity this is called the grouped series of corresponding to x n a new series obtained. Now, the nature of these two series will remain the same. So, that is the result is the result says if a series sigma x n 1 to infinity is convergent is convergent then any series obtained obtained any series obtained okay from it by grouping from it by grouping by grouping the terms is also convergent is also convergent and to the same value same value it means the sum will not change ok. Let us see the proof of it proof is also straightforward simple what is given is a series is given to be convergent let us construct let y 1 is the one term which is grouped up to say k one terms y 2 is another term which of the new series which is grouped from the original series by choosing these terms up to k 2 k 1 start from k 1 plus 1 to k 2 and like this continue. So, what happen is that basically so we get the t 1 the original series uh, any term let so if suppose if S n denotes the nth partial sum of the series sigma x n 1 to infinity and and t k denotes the kth denotes the kth partial sum of the series sigma by n 1 to infinity. Then what we see here is T 1 that is the first term first term is what up to here by 1 that is the by 1. So, by 1 is nothing but what this is the first k 1 sum of the original series. So, it is the s k 1 
then T2. T2 is the second term means this. Now, what is this term? This is starting from x k plus 1 and so on. So, basically when you are choosing this T 2 partial sum, then this is equal to what? Uh, by 1 plus by 2, uh, this is first end. Okay. So, by 1 minus by 2, that is equal to by 1, by 1 is this term or up to k 1 and then this is up to k 2, k 1 is uh, say another term. So, we can say this is equal to y 1 uh, plus by 2. If I take this sec, uh, term two terms, first two terms sum, then what we get is by 1 plus by 2, this is equal to s k 2, okay? up to a k by 1 this term plus this term. That is second term of this new series and continues. So, what the first term is the partial sum of the original series, second term is also the partial sum of the original series and the original series is convergent. So, this sequence of the partial sum will converge therefore, this sequence will also converge. <coughs> so, since the sequence T k of partial sums, sums of the group series of the group series sigma y k 1 to infinity is a subsequence is a subsequence of the sequence S n of S n. S n is the first n term. Okay, the subsequence of this series and this series partial sum of S of partial sum of the series sigma x k x n and but this series convergence. So, this partial sum is convergent. So, therefore, but limit of S n as n tends to exist because the series is convergent. Therefore, this implies the limit of T k over k will exist and hence implies sigma y k n by k 1 to infinity converges and that is the proof for it. Okay. So, what we have seen is here that if a series is given which is a convergent series and if I regroup the terms of the series without changing their sum, then the new series so obtained will also be convergent. Now, let us think a converse part of it. Suppose a series is given whose nature is not known, but we are regrouping the series. We are regrouping the series and getting a new series which is suppose say convergent. Now, the question is whether the original series is convergent or not. The answer is not necessary to be true. So, the converse is the not or as a remark you say the converse of this theorem the converse of this theorem of this theorem is not true in general in general. Okay. For example, if I take this series for example, if we take this series 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 and so on and if I regroup this which is a diverging series, this is a diverging, okay. but if I regroup the series 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 and so on then it is convergent, it is convergent and converges to what and the sum is 0 and sum is 0. So, what we see here? The original series is uh, when we regroup from the original we are getting a convergent series, but the original series basically is not a convergent series. So, the converse of part is not true in general. Okay? So, that is a very interesting example. Now, another concept is uh, also rearrangement of the series. Rearrangement of se the series. Now, in case of the grouping of the series, we are not changing the order of the terms that is the place of the term is fixed, but in case of the rearrangement of the series, 
we are free to take up to shift the element from first place to ninth place, seventh place to hundred place like this. So, if I keep on shifting the position of the element, we are getting infinitely new sequences, new series from the original one. Now, in this process, the series new series so obtained whether that series will also retain the same character as the original one. If the original is convergent and by rearranging that series, if we are getting a new series, whether the new series is also convergent. So, the answer is in not true that a from a series which is given to be a convergent series and if I rearrange the set terms of the series, then in general you cannot say the new series so obtained will be a convergent and will have the same limit. And in fact, this is a very uh, result, very good result and very important result which is given uh, say why one of the famous mathematician Riemann, what he said in case of a alternating convergence series, if I regroup the terms of the series, then we can get any real number which is the sum of that series. That is for any given real number, one can have a rearrangement of the series, one can have a rearrangement according to that given real number, so that the series will converge and converge to that real number. So, rearrangement of the term is very so clear. Uh, what is rearrangement? Let me just talk it uh, another series. Rearrangement of a series is, is another series, another series that is obtained, that is obtained from the given one, given one by using by using all of the terms all of the terms exactly once, but scrambling scrambling the order in which the terms are taken. Are taken, are taken. For example, if we take a harmonic series, this is our harmonic series sigma 1 by n 1 to infinity 1 plus 1 by 2 1 by 3 and so on the new series suppose I take the rearrangement of this harmonic series interchange the first and second term. So, half plus 1 third and fourth term 1 fourth and 1 third like this. So, interchanging interchanging uh, the first and second term first and second third and fourth and so on we get new series. So, this is the new series which is the rearrangement of which is obtained by rearranging the term or maybe another series if I take like this 1 plus half 1 by 4, 1 by 3, 1 by 5, 1 by 7 and so on means first the even terms we are taking first even two even terms 1 then uh, 1 by 2 then uh, one, uh, after 1 we are having 2 even terms then 3 odd terms and like this odd terms even terms and so this is another one. Now, this will give a different series, but the series will have a different nature that we will discuss later on. Thank you very much.